Hello, everyone. Everybody at Inside Nebraska. My name is Steve Marek. I'm the staff. I'm a staff writer at Inside Nebraska, and today we are debuting a uh, first ever um, ep episode of a series that we are going to call Black Shirt Breakdown, where um, Jay Foreman. Hello, uh, that is our resident <laughs> uh, black shirt. I'm excited to really excited to break down uh, plays and and Husker plays with you, Jay. First of all, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm excited. And, and you know, this is something we've been uh, working on uh, for quite some time. And and I think it's, it's exciting to bring a different view of uh, every game and then games moving forward as well. Yes, absolutely. So just to give a quick rundown of how these videos are going to go, we're going to watch the um, previous Husker game. We're going to pick out one good play, one right. bad play, and then a nice little segment Jay, that you came up with called cause and effect, where we're going to look at the cause and kind of talk about how how it affected the game and, and what kind of led um, what kind of came after um, the cause play. So I'm really excited to get into it. Yeah, it's uh, something that's, you know, new and hopefully unique and, and especially the cause and effect. I think a lot of times people focus on, you know, when they team score touchdowns and maybe how they scored. And a lot of times I think that's set up by a couple of plays prior and whether it changes the momentum. And then obviously sometimes it changes the, the score on the scoreboard as well. Absolutely. So let's get right into it. Um, first of all, let's start with the good play. Now the good right. play we picked out was Chancellor Brewington's 45 yard um, kind of prim perimeter screen here um, that, that Mark Whipple, I thought was a well-called play, a well-designed play, but uh, Jay, um, first of all, um, this, this play came on a second and 10 for Nebraska's own 39 right. yard line. Got a really big chunk play out of this. So, Jay, what do you see? Yeah, sometimes you got to come with a unique uh, formation and personnel group, you know, when you're, you're kind of sputtering out of blocks, as Nebraska did against this Illinois defense. So, right now, they're in an overloaded uh, form offensive formation, and they want to see if they're in man or zone. And so, you see Marcus Washington uh, motion over. They see they're in man. Chancellor Bruyntings in there as a kind of offset back. And so, they did something that Purdue and teams have done against Nebraska is test their principles and see if Il Illinois can – uh, cover a back out of the backfield just by, you know, crossing the action here. And both linebackers suck up on Anthony Grant. He does a good job of selling it. There's Chancellor Brointing out there with a host of offensive linemen and their tight end, uh, you know, leading the way for explosive play. So, again, you know, it, it's self-scouting and using some things that they can use with unique personnel groups to be explosive. And coming out of the bye week, you like to see this. It, it's a different formation, different personnel group. Chancellor Brewington's out there, hasn't had a lot of plays this year. You saw Oliver Martin with a really, really good block downfield. So when you have explosive plays, you got to have good perimeter or blocking along with the execution at the line of a scrimmage. So you see Latoski out here trying to find somebody, Hickson. Uh, I think the tight end, uh, number 40, 49, has a really good block, just gets enough to where he's on an edge. And Chancellor Brewington does a good job of running after catch right there, block, uh, breaks two tackles, uh, gets up the hash. And you see Oliver Martin, Martin working there. For his, which seems it would be like five seconds trying to uh, block downfield. And the, and the guy that makes the play is coming way out of the screen. And so uh, this is a great play call, great execution, uh, great job by Chancellor Brewington to be patient as well, because sometimes you can run yourself out of the, the blocking uh, of your lineman. And so these big guys are running downfield, and you see Hickson Latowski come in there. It was a really, really big play when Nebraska needed a momentum uh, shift where they hadn't really done anything uh, you know, offensively up to this point, but you had to get, get an explosive play against a really good and well-coached defense. You see Chancellor Brewington again, breaking two tackles, uh, getting another 10 to 15 yards out of there. It's a really good job. And look at Anthony Grant there, you know, selling out and selling the play. And that's a good selfless player, uh, good leadership qualities there. And you like Oliver Martin working to get that nice little block downfield. Chancellor Brewington uh, for 44 yards was a huge momentum swing for this Nebraska offense and team as well jay with with the the quality of defensive lines that nebraska's offense is going to see moving forward minnesota michigan iowa wisconsin can you see do you think that we're going to see more of things like this to try to take advantage of these really aggressive defensive fronts yeah you see i mean you see all three of their defensive linemen they're you know one one gap getting up field trying to you know everybody's trying to kill the quarterback uh mm -hmm. so you got to use their aggressiveness against them and you see the linebackers as well. They're attacking the line of scrimmage, focus on Anthony Grant, uh, lose sight of Chancellor Brewington, still look at number five, still hasn't found him, right? Uh, so that's a great play call and it's a great sell by Chancellor Brewington. Look, he's getting kind of 
you know, sneaking under underneath the pad level of the offense and defense alignment, gets out into the backfield, good timing, very patient, gets the offense alignment out there on the edge. Number five is out of position, so out of position that him and 49 run into each other. He falls down. Chancellor Brewington is faster than 49. See 38 right here. Doesn't have a good angle on him. He breaks that tackle. So, yeah, it's a good job of using teams' aggressiveness and aggressive nature against them. Look at him. All of them are focused on Casey Thompson, trying to stop him, not, not even aware of the screen. And then there he, there's Chancellor Bruinton out there. So it's a great play call, great thought process as well of looking at Illinois, looking how at how Illinois is trying to attack Nebraska's offense and use that aggressive nature against them. And then what it does in the future, uh, it's going to put something into uh, defensive coordinator's head of not only Chancellor Bruinton, but that overload uh, formation for Nebraska and give them something else to practice against a well or prepare for in this instance. Now let's shift over to the uh, one bad play. Uh, this is yeah. Isaiah Williams, um, former quarterback at um, Illinois, actually. He was a highly touted guy out of Trinity Catholic High School in St. Louis, um, but then moved over to wide receiver because he's obviously a really um, just shifty, shifty guy with the ball in his hands right. and he's a great athlete. Um, but yeah, this came on a third and five on Nebraska's 46 yard line. Jay, just obviously yeah. a lot of moving motions here and uh, right. a mesh concept right underneath. Right. Yeah. See, here's this is the uh, if you go back to where Purdue scored their first touchdown, this is the same formation, except for they lined up in it and they have the tight end at, on the line of scrimmage. And so what they did was they're going to motion over to see what Nebraska's in man to man. And they're also going to see if Nebraska is going to run what's called banjo. That means in and out coverage, which in this case would be between Isaac Gifford and Miles Farmer. Nebraska w chooses to do what I what we used to call is called uh, a vice call. That means you're locked on your guy no matter where he goes. Now, what ideally what you would like to see is Luke Reimer here, who is not, uh, you know, have any coverage, be the whole player. So a whole player. Uh, responsibility is to make anybody that gets caught up in the wash or gets beat right right so on a crossing route that's huge you're you're there and when i played you could knock guys out you know between five yards but in this case luke reimer did like a secondary rush you see uh ernest houseman has his you know back to the receiver he, he's done a good job of covering his man you see buford did a really good job of covering his guy and uh and then you saw uh Harzog get a little bit caught up in the mesh and then they he actually ran into miles farmer and that's the whole point of a rub route, they're rubbing defenders off against each other. And if you decide to vice it, that means no switching in this call, you have to defend at different levels. So you'd like Isaac Gifford to get up into what's called a mug position. So you're essentially right up there, man to man, not giving him any space that which would allow, actually in this case it's Newsom, uh, excuse me, uh, the to play from a depth and then play from you know top down on Isaiah Williams. Because if you don't have a, a hold defender, and you're in a disadvantage as far as uh, guarding a receiver, you want to maybe tackle him at the six to eight yard game to play another another play because you're not going to be able to stop him for no game because he's running away from you. So by play formation, by motion over, uh, puts Newsom in a disadvantage and you'd like to have some help for him on the backside of this defense right, right here. So you could either do three on two with Luke Reimer uh, or you could do three on two up top or four on three up top and kind of do some sort of in and out coverage down at the bottom. But the adjustment probably needs to be made on these crossing routes. And that's what teams will do when they see that you're not going to be switching anything off and you're playing at the same level. So the Nebraska got in a little bit of trouble there for pre-snap uh, uh, misalignment and pre-snap uh, miscommunication. So you would like to see Isaac Gifford move up and you would like to see uh, Newsom play a little bit top down with inside leverage on number one, because if he ran to the, an outside route, so if number one went to the flat, you know you have a help defender there. And so when you're lining up an outside leverage and you can kind of guess that he's going to run a, you know, by formation alone right here, he's not going to really run vertical and he's running an inside route. Now it's a double negative. You're lined wrong and then also you're out leverage yourself. And that's how you, you use or how Illinois has used Nebraska's defense alignment against themselves to turn into a, a, a touchdown in a pair in a, in a pretty uh, imperative point of the game. It's, it's third and five. So that's a defense. You'd like to see the defense will be able to win a couple of those third downs. You got out leverage. It, it, Illinois did a really good job of blocking downfield, but this right here is something that you saw last week against Purdue. 
Uh, Nebraska actually has decent pass rush in, in DeVito's face. Uh, you would like to either have a whole defender or a little bit better uh, pre-snap communication alignment and assignment, which will allow you to be more aggressive. And they just got rubbed off by the rub route here, here by Illinois. This is two games in a row now where um, Purdue and now Illinois, they do that mesh concept and have receivers and, and running these rub routes. Do you think that this is something that Minnesota is going to watch on film and we're going to see a lot of it next week? Well, you, you said it right there. There's two weeks in a row and they're running it different ways. So they're just dressing it up a little bit different in the, within their playbook. So Minnesota is going to run something like this to see if you adjust it. And so Nebraska has to, uh, go back and maybe have some calls that they can make in a little bit more of pre-snap uh, recognition, you know, play play for, or the formation, either by they align in it or they emotion or emotion to it. They're getting back to what uh, Purdue showed and then now Illinois is going to show. So Minnesota is going to do something else uh, in that, in that way. They might have two tight ends run it. They might have two receivers run it. They might do it with their running back or they might have a, a specialty receiver come in. So Nebraska has to just understand the concepts of these plays aren't going to go away. So you just, if you want to vice it and not switch anything, just make sure you're playing at different levels, but then also understand where your leverage is or where your leverage or where you're out leverage. So you don't give up an explosive play or the worst case scenario, give up a touchdown like they did with the Isaiah Williams. Great stuff. Now let's move over to the final segment here, cause and effects segment now the cause is is going to be um casey thompson's play that he got injured on illinois runs a stunt up front on the d line um nebraska's offensive line does not catch it in time and um yeah uh seth coleman the edge player loops around what looks to be around the a gap and just you know lands the fatal blow to to casey thompson who is a tough kid he's gotten up a lot of times this season but everybody kind of knew in the back of their in the back of their minds that, you know, there was going to be one play um, that he didn't get up from. And, and this is the shot that that got him out. And then after this play, um, it, it only took Illinois two plays to find the end zone. Logan Smothers came in three and out. Illinois got the ball right back, drove down the field, scored another touchdown. And that was the beginning of a 20-0 run for the fighting line. Right. And, and so, you know, the, a play before this, you had the Ramir Johnson wheel route that was dropped that could have been a touchdown. Great point. Now, what Illinois did, did it right here is they brought five defensive linemen up up here to try to find a one-on-one -on -one matchup to get some pressure against Nebraska. So you got to give Illinois some credit. They went in on the sideline, adjusted, and you see right, right here, you got two guys out wide and one-on-one -on -one, uh, pass rush against our two offensive tackles, which is Bryce Benhart and Turner Corcoran. Number four beats Corcoran pretty easily right here, right? He, so he's thinking he's getting home. And what they did on the other side, they wanted three guys that aren't normally out in space to pass off a TTE stunt. So the both of the tackles are slanted to the right. Coleman's coming underneath, underneath and getting the face of Casey Thompson. And if you see this, Casey is following through. So his elbow is exposed. And so uh, Coach Joseph said that he got hit on the elbow and lost a little bit of feeling in his hands. And when you see this on the other angle, Coleman has a brace on, on his on his arm. And I think that just caught him on a, on a funny part on his on his elbow and he lost some feeling there. And so the nerve endings there look like they're damaged right here. But if you see this right here, you see what it, this defensive front right here that you got two guys looping out to the right. Coleman selling his pass rush. You would like to see three guys pass it off, maybe if they're in man or have, even have Chancellor Bruinstein here check check release. So check releases, check for any leakage in the pass protection and release late. He releases too, a little bit too quick. Both of them are at Casey Thompson. Number four hits him. Cole, Coleman hits him. Uh, Casey's still a tough kid. The ball flutters on him. Uh, Brown gets it, gets an explosive return. Three plays later, they score. Logan Smothers has to come in um, and they go promptly a three and out. So then therefore the momentum is, is heavily in, in Illinois' favor where you go three and out and you don't run a lot of time off the clock. They get the ball, get the ball back. They score, so they go a two for one going into halftime when Nebraska's only really had the ball or possession of the ball once. And so uh, these are the cause and effects of how you can lose momentum going into the game. And let's not let's not forget Nebraska's winning the game right now. Yeah, it's a it's an ugly game, a, a kind of a phone booth game. How Illinois wants you to play, and then they run a, a, a simple stunt here. Uh, and, and it isn't picked up. If you see right here, Nebraska has two guys that should be checking for any leakage. Anthony Grant is focused on uh, 38. He's out in the pass route. 
You would like Chancellor Brewington to check inside out, right? Especially with this kind of slide protection. So both of them should be right there, maybe uh, foot to foot. So Casey Thompson has a clean pocket uh, and you're getting beat on the, in the, uh, the guard position by Turner Corcoran with number four there. But when the hit hits Casey right there, you can see the jolt to his body. And then the, obviously crashing down to the, to the ground really hurt, hurt his uh, arm. The ball fluttered. Illinois gets a turnover, explosive return, touchdown, uh, uh, three and out. Like essentially could be a turnover on downs, another touchdown. You know, that's a, you know, 14 point swing right there in a matter of what, two or three minutes in Illinois favor. So they're going into the locker room, not only not losing the game, because if we just finished, the, you know, the half right here, Nebraska's winning, but now they're up by two scores. And so um, these are little plays that can lead to, uh, big momentum shifts, not only in the game, but in the scoreboard. And you saw this here uh, that affected Nebraska both ways, both in the momentum of the game and on the scoreboard. And it kind of put Nebraska in a big, big hole, even though half of football was still uh, left to play. Uh, you lose your starting quarterback that's been productive. You lose your leader of your offense that's been productive. And then now you put everybody in a scramble mode as far as who plays. Chubba Purdy comes in and then it, the, the, the landslide just continued. So uh, Nebraska fans, when they look at the end, end of the score, they're like, well, how did it get like that? Well, it started with the Ramir Johnson dropping the wheel route, yep. the miss, miss pick up here on the, uh, you know, uh, TTE stunt, and then the injury to Casey Thompson. That's three big, huge negatives going against Nebraska. Then there's three plays for Illinois in, the, in, their, in, in, in their favor, and uh, the game is essentially over before you even start the second half. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that I didn't catch live that you pointed out um, that that I kind of liked and thought it was interesting. Coleman has an uh, elbow brace on his left arm. Right. Yeah. And just uh, w what else does that do, obviously, um, when his left arm is coming down pretty hard on Casey Thompson? Yeah, I mean, he I mean, he has a probably they usually players wear this from hyperextended elbow by no means is, a, you know, a dirty play, but it just so happens. It's a very odd play when you get hit on your elbow. Casey's following through right there. His arm is exposed. And Coleman's doing what he's supposed to do, right? Get his hand up, try to get a tip ball. He actually hits Casey on his follow through. So it's mm -hmm. the force of the follow through going forward with the force of Coleman trying to uh, get a tip ball. And that's what you ask every defensive lineman, get to the quarterback and get your hand up. And he's going for the throwing arm as you're caught, as you're taught and every good defensive lineman should. And so this, he's just doing his job and it's just an odd hit at an odd, odd part of Casey's body, which is his elbow. And, you know, he ends up being hurt for the rest of the game. And his status for this upcoming game is, is up in the air. But see, you, you, right there in slow motion, you see the jolt to his elbow. And then the elbow hits the ground as well. So um, it's just an unfortunate play uh, and an unfortunate few plays for Nebraska that lost in the momentum that they had at this point of the game. The game wasn't going perfect for either team, but Nebraska was winning the game. And so you'd like the, the Nebraska to be able to finish those last six minutes going into half with the lead and then getting the ball after halftime versus losing the momentum the last six minutes and coming out of halftime without a true plan to get the momentum back with your backup quarterback or quarterbacks in Chubba Purdy or Logan Smothers. When you see week after week, these defensive fronts stunting, moving a lot of uh, movement, what's the, just what is wrong up front? Is it a lack of communication? Are they physically getting beat? What is it? Well, it's a little bit of both right here. You know, Turner Corker gets physically beat, right? And that happens. This is a good defense and this is a very, very good defense alignment that beats. So that happens in the game. They're on scholarship and this is, they're one of the best defenses in the nation. The communication is okay. And the execution is, average you have two guys there that are check releasing so what you like from a coaching standpoint they have put remedies in place for what's been happening you see chancellor Bruinton, you know he's check he should be checking inside out or outside in either way you're wrong you have anthony grant if, if he's checking inside out or outside in either way you're wrong you'd like to see if he could help out here with number four right if he's checking outside in and then also he's checking on the running back he doesn't see 49 and neither does chancellor Bruinton. So it's just a, 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 an execution thing because the, the adjustments are there put in place. So now the players need to execute more. So everybody can be mad at the offensive line, right? They're, they're, they're going to get beat. But also they need to have the backup there, which was there by two players that knew it needed to do a better job because on a deep and, and slow developing pass right here, they're trying to get Washington in a one-on-one 
Chancellor Bruinton and Anthony Grant are the second and third options here. So they have to operate as second and third options or maybe fourth or fifth options, check release, check for any pass rush because they know this is a deep developing slow route. And so they both are too, too uh, quick to get out into the pass route. It's left their offensive lineman exposed, left the quarterback exposed. Uh, he gets hurt and he gets hit. He's out. That's has lost all, all momentum, both on the field and in the scoreboard. Yeah, that image of Casey Thompson just sitting there right there, that's, you know, that's brutal right there. Your starting quarterback not feeling his fingers. Um, not great. Yeah, not great. So, yeah, we right. are – that, and that was the first black shirt breakdown. I am excited to go back and, and um, we'll watch the Minnesota game, pick out three more, a uh, good play, a bad play, and then a cause and effect play. Um, but, yeah, well, it will be really interesting to see if Purdue and – Illinois both had success with those mesh routes underneath. And then on the flip side, uh, on the defensive side, see how much movement and stunts um, they're going to throw Nebraska's, Nebraska's way. It should be really interesting. Yeah, and hopefully next week it's all good plays for Nebraska. And uh, we're talking about a victory against those Golden Gophers. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that was our first uh, black shirt breakdown. Excited to do this every week um, for Jay Foreman. I'm Steve Marek. Uh, Jay, thanks again. I'm, I'm excited to get going with this. Yeah, thank you, man. I look forward to next week. For sure. All right, everyone. Uh, uh, that was the first Black Shirt Breakdown. We will see you next week.